Syrian Civil Defense, a rescue organization made up entirely of volunteers who operate in opposition-controlled Syria. According to their own data, the group have rescued more than 58,000 people, including Omran Daknish, who painfully reminded the world of the horrors unfolding in Syria every day. The task of these modern-day war heroes is extremely dangerous. To date, around 130 White Helmet volunteers have been killed in the country's relentless civil war. One of the group's most notable losses happened in August when an airstrike killed the White Helmet volunteer who miraculously rescued a baby who'd been trapped under rubble for 16 hours. But what is always left out of these glowing mainstream media puff pieces is any actual information about the organization. Where did it come from? Who founded it? Where does it get its funding? And why does it operate exclusively in terrorist-held areas of Syria? The first clues about the real nature of the group comes from their name itself. Calling themselves the Syria Civil Defense is misleading in multiple ways. First, it implies that the group was founded in Syria by Syrians. It was not. The group was in fact founded in March 2013 in Turkey by James Lemessurier, a former British military intelligence officer then doing contract work for the US and UK governments. None of this information is even controversial. This is the story as told by Lemessurier himself at a conference in Lisbon in 2015. In early 2013, I had a meeting with nine uh, local leaders that had come out from northern Aleppo. And they painted this picture of the frequency and the intensity of the bombing that was taking place. And I was delivering programs on behalf of the US and UK government, and we were able to offer them some good governance training, some democratization training, and a handful of sat phones. Several days later, I was very fortunate um, to meet the, uh, the head of Turkey's earthquake response group, uh, a group of people called Akut. And the conversation that we had was along the lines of, if they can rescue people as a result of a building that's been flattened as a result of an earthquake, how possible is it to rescue people from a building that's been collapsed as a result of a bomb? The name Syria Civil Defense is also a lie because there is a real Syria Civil Defense that has been operating in the country for 65 years. The actual Syria Civil Defense a volunteer search and rescue organization, was established in Syria in 1953. Unlike the White Helmets, the real Syria Civil Defense is a member of the International Civil Defense Organization and, again in contrast to the White Helmets, has an emergency number, 113, that can be called in Syria by those needing assistance. But this Syria Civil Defense does not enjoy the glitz and glamour of Oscar-winning documentaries, the constant attention of the international press, or the more than $60 million in funding by foreign governments that have been bestowed on the White Helmets. Do you know who finances them, how they operate, who are they supported by, what kind of organization they have? How do you get your information well, from um, them and so on? Well, I can say we, we provide we, them we with, a little bit well, well, I can tell you that we yeah. provide through USAID about right. $23 million in assistance right. uh, to them. Now, I would like to come back to the funding of the White Helmets in a little more detail. Um, my colleague here covered it um, in general. But I would like to focus on the UK Foreign Office and the use of the Conflict Stability and Security Fund to support and finance the Syrian opposition and the White Helmets. The UK regime is a primary player in the US coalition and in its operations inside Syria. Following a recent parliamentary question from Baroness Caroline Cox, it has been confirmed that the UK Foreign Office has financed the Syrian opposition almost £200 million over three years through this conflict fund. However, the British government has so far refused to release the names of the recipients. During my time in East Aleppo in 2016-17 and with Syrian journalist Khaled Iskaif, while searching the, the council office, the local council offices, we found and translated documents in Arabic that referred to two UK organizations, Adam Smith International and Integrity Global. Both organizations are funded by the UK Foreign Office via this conflict fund to offer assistance to the Syrian opposition. 
And this has been achieved via a variety of outreach agents, one of whom is the Tamkeen Project, which claims to build resilience in Syrian communities and which establishes, funds and supports the local councils in terrorist-held areas such as East Aleppo and Idlib. Tamkeen was responsible for the financing and maintenance of the East Aleppo councils. According to Britta Hagi Hassan, self-professed mayor of Aleppo, in an interview with The Guardian, the program provided East Aleppo City Council with £820,000 in May 2016. During my time working in East Aleppo, it was clear that the councils were working hand-in-hand -hand with Nusra Front. Their centres in each district were always next door to Nusra Front headquarters and White Helmet centres, i.e. they always formed an integrated complex. But even more disturbing than the unusual founding or clandestine funding of the group is the mountain of evidence demonstrating that the White Helmets, far from their official claim to political neutrality, are in fact intimately embedded with known and listed terrorist organizations in Syria. Again, the most damning evidence in this regard is not controversial in the slightest. It comes directly from the White Helmets themselves. Numerous videos and photos have surfaced showing the White Helmets parading on the dead bodies of Syrian government forces and flying the flags of known terrorist organizations. An in-depth report on the Syrian war blog last year examined the social media profiles of 65 different White Helmet-connected figures and found numerous posts in support of ISIS, Jabhat al-Nusra, Arar al-Sham, and other listed terrorist organizations. Some even posted pictures of themselves with known terrorist leaders or waving the flag of terrorist groups like ISIS, and many proudly displayed images of dead Syrian soldiers. Most incredible of all is the footage of the White Helmets attending the executions of Syrian civilians and soldiers by terrorist groups, moving in to cart the dead bodies away mere seconds after the victims are brutally slain. Most of this evidence is explained away as bad apples in the organization acting on their own. Some of these bad apples are then castigated in public displays, like when one white helmet was fired when footage surfaced showing him disposing the mutilated corpses of Syrian government fighters. When a graphic video of the white helmets overseeing the execution of a man in terrorist-occupied Dara surfaced last year, the group actually defended the workers while acknowledging that they, quote, did not fully uphold the strict principle of neutrality and impartiality. But incredibly, James Le Mesurier, the former British intelligence officer who founded the White Helmets in 2013, defended the workers caught in one bloody video from May 2015. The Middle Ground, a Singaporean website, ran a story last year featuring Le Mesurier's take on the incident. But what about the damning video from May 6, 2015? The article reads, White Helmet volunteers were caught on tape running in to clear a body seconds after a gunman executed a man. It turns out that the deceased was tried and sentenced to death in a local Sharia court, said Mr. Miserier. When his father found out about the time of execution, he called the White Helmets to help him conduct a proper burial. Besides, the gunman was clad in a balaclava, not a White Helmet. Accusing the White Helmets of this act would be akin to accusing Joseph of Arimathea of crucifying Jesus. In opposition to the deafening mainstream media silence over this incredible mountain of evidence against the White Helmets, stand only a handful of independent researchers, universally ignored, castigated, or marginalized from the mainstream discussion on the issue. These independent researchers include Vanessa Beely, a British researcher who has been one of the few journalists to report extensively on the ground in areas like East Aleppo over the last two years, and Eva Bartlett, a Canadian blogger who has gained notoriety for using her own on-the-ground reporting from Syria to speak out against the mainstream narrative about the White Helmets. And the majority of the evidence against the White Helmets comes from the White Helmets themselves. Given that there are so few voices speaking up against the White Helmets, it should come as no surprise that when The Guardian finally deigned to address what they termed the conspiracy theories about the organization, they turned their attention on these very researchers. In How Syria's White Helmets Became Victims of an Online Propaganda Machine, The Guardian turned to Olivia Solon to dismiss all opposition to the White Helmets as the work of anti-imperialist activists, conspiracy theorists, and trolls with the support of the Russian government. 
The choice of Solon to report on this story is especially odd. A technology reporter in San Francisco, Solon has no background of any sort in geopolitics or combat zone reporting and, as far as can be determined, has never set foot in Syria. Instead, she relied exclusively on sources such as the murky PR lobbying firm, the Syria Campaign, to praise the White Helmets and castigate their detractors. Bizarrely, the report devotes a great deal of attention to the White Helmets' mannequin challenge video, footage of an admittedly fake and staged rescue operation released by the group in an attempt to cash in on a viral internet video trend taking place at the time. The inference of the video is obvious that the group is perfectly capable of staging incredibly realistic and completely fake rescue operations at any time. These fake videos, stripped of their context, would be uncritically promoted as authentic by mainstream outlets like The Guardian in the exact same way that the completely fictitious video of a Syrian boy rescuing his sister under sniper fire was uncritically accepted by the mainstream media until it was admitted to be a fake video produced in Malta by a Norwegian film crew to, quote, see how the media would respond to such a video. Yeah, well, I mean, Olivia Solon contacted myself and Ava Bartlett pretty much at the same time. And she sent a list um, from memory of about 20 questions, all of which were basically asking myself and Ava to defend um, our position and the evidence that we'd uh, collated over, a, you know, a couple of years for me, certainly three years or now four years investigating the White Helmet organization, um, both um, remotely and inside Syria on the ground. Um, so it was it was very much an attempt to put us in a position of having to defend ourselves. And I think both of us quite rightly took the position that look, we're not here to defend ourselves. You should be defending the evidence against this organization instead of providing a blanket promotional um, report on this organization, which is what The Guardian has specifically done, of course. Um, since the creation of this organization. You know, in 2016, it lobbied effectively for the White Helmets to win the Nobel Peace Prize. And when it was inundated with negative comments, it simply closed comments. So, you know, The Guardian, which itself is embedded um, in the corporate neocolonialist um, structure in the UK. I mean, it's, it's owned um, by Scott Trust Limited. It gets the majority it's um, ad revenue from HSBC that is not only the Swiss banking part of HSBC that has been um, basically uh, prosecuted for fraud, but also has been also found guilty um, of fraud against um, consumers in the UK. So, you know, this is already a sort of an interesting background to The Guardian. Um, and hardly surprising then, of course, that they're supporting the, the sort of humanitarian, in inverted commas, war concept that is always the driver behind particularly UK Foreign Office um, policy in the region. Um, so Solon approached us with these questions. We both went back and basically said we have no interest in defending ourselves. And then, of course, she went out to um, fundamentally all of those entities, organisations and individuals who support fund, finance, and do the PR for the White Helmets, such as the Syria campaign, which incidentally, two days later, produced a 46-page report in which, again, I'm described as the queen of disinformation. And even in that 46 pages, they do not address one element of the evidence against the White Helmets. Researchers like Beely, Bartlett, and Professor Tim Anderson, also mentioned in Solon's report, are easy enough targets for The Guardian. Independent journalists taking it upon themselves to counter the Syria narrative, they would never be taken seriously by establishment media circles in the first place. Curiously omitted from the Guardian article, however, are the award-winning, internationally respected journalists who have similarly expressed skepticism about the White Helmets, their backers, and the PR campaign that surrounds them. There is Gareth Porter, the award-winning journalist who has contributed to foreign policy, foreign affairs, The Nation, Al Jazeera, Salon, the Huffington Post, Alternate, and countless other outlets, who wrote How a Syrian White Helmets Leader Played Western Media in November 2016. There is Philip Giraldi, a former CIA counterterrorism specialist and military intelligence officer who wrote The Fraud of the White Helmets in July of 2017. 
There is Stephen Kinzer, former New York Times correspondent and, ironically, current contributor to The Guardian, who tweeted his congratulations to Al-Qaeda and Syrian jihadists when the film about their PR outfit, The White Helmets, won the Oscar. And, of course, there is John Pilger, one of the most respected and celebrated journalists and documentarians of the past half century. In Syria, they know how to intervene. They know how to manipulate the media. We had the White Helmets, a complete propaganda construct in Syria. They end up getting an Academy Award. They know how to intervene in, in public discourse every day and in politics every day. It is unclear whether Solon and The Guardian believe Porter, Giraldi, Kinzer, and Pilger to be anti-imperialist activists, conspiracy theorists, or trolls with the support of the Russian government. But the issue here is not merely one of PR and propaganda, as appalling as the uncritical reporting about the White Helmets has been. What is worrying is that the so-called Syrian civil defense is, as we have seen, not Syrian at all. Founded, funded, and promoted by foreign governments, foreign contractors, and foreign lobbyists and PR agencies, the White Helmets are not a spontaneous Syrian search and rescue operation, but a template. A template that, if successful, can and will be employed anywhere and everywhere that those same foreign powers want to destabilize targeted governments in the future. 